Hey, a pleasure. Good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be the next edition of the Royal Take as we preview the weekend. But first, go over the recent transactions. As Mason Millman, a very talented young defenseman who played very well for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms while covering them for Nitty Gritty last year, obviously follow over at Flyers Nitty Gritty for, for great, excuse me, uh, Flyers organizational coverage. But Millman is able to come down a very solid mobile defenseman that can move the puck really well. It's going to be fun to watch him uh, down at the ECHL level, and I think he will have great success down there where he's kind of on a conditioning extent. And then McKinnon comes down. We'll see if he can finally get put into a game here at the ECHL level. Only played four with the Phantoms. Haven't been playing enough hockey for him this year to be able to get into a groove. Uh, Pat Nagel was promoted again to the Phantom due to the fact that John Gillies, uh, the Phantoms PTO goaltender, signed a two-way contract. So congratulations to him with the St. Louis Blues organization due to Billy Huso going down with an injury, and also due to Jordan Bennington being on the COVID list. And then you had Charlie Lindgren, which also hats off to him for having a great first game back in the NHL and being able to capture a win for the St. Louis Blues. But um, when it comes to the Reading Royals, the other transactions they also made today were putting Jared Brandt um, on the reserve. They also put Mike Cornell on the reserves, and then they put on the active roster, um, activated from the reserves, Kenny Hausinger. So, he's going to be active, you would one would think, for tonight's game against the Adirondack Thunder, and it'll be interesting to see um, if they do put in a guy like Millman, if he's able to come in the day I feel like he won't. Because you're going to want the practice time and everything to get back into your groove, practice with the team. And what have you. But if he is, then we'll have to see. And we'll, and that will be great to see him in. But hopefully, maybe he'll be able to come into tomorrow's game. And then if not, he definitely would, I would presume, be in the next game. That would be ne all the way next week, which he would have a lot of practice time in between. But in 18 games played, our Royals are 8-5 and five with a 44.40% win percentage. Uh, the problem for the Royals, as far as they've been giving up a little bit too many goals, of course, 58 goals allowed already. Uh, we have one overtime win, four overtime losses, so obviously the Royals haven't been good in the overtime, so you want to try to get it done in regulation. And one shootout loss, the dreaded shootouts that I hate. And then there's 51 goals scored for the Reading Royals. Um, now, when we look at the Anirondack Thunder... They, there we go, they are a team that has, as this thing doesn't want to work right now for some reason, you know, you gotta love when technology doesn't work, but they are a team that just overall, while that's loading, they've been solid all season, one game over 500. Um, they their same problem has been the problem of the Reading Royals, which has been they've allowed too many goals on the season. They have the same goal score fifty one. Uh, they've allowed sixty one goals against. Uh, they've only got to one overtime to lose in that overtime. Haven't got to a shootout. Uh, their power play percentage is fifteen. They have seventy one power plays and only fifteen goals scored. So that's not very good. Uh, fifty one penalty kills and sixty nine opportunities. That definitely is not bad. And then if we compare them to our Reading Royals, again, goals scored is the same. Uh, shorthanded goals, Adirondack has one on the season. Um, when it comes to power play percentage, it's basically even 21% to 20, where it's favors by 1%, the Adirondack Thunder. And then penalty kill percentage is dead even at 74%. So these teams actually coming in, even though our Reading Royals obviously have the better their three games in the standings above 500. The Thunder are nothing to be taken lightly at 9, 8, and 1 because they're a team that really compares pretty well um, to the Reading Royals when you really take a backhanded look at it. And this is a team that you cannot take lightly. And you can't take, obviously, any team in the league lightly. It doesn't matter where they're at in the standings because in any league, whether it's the AHL, NHL, ECHL, every team... Obviously, on a given night, if you catch if they catch their win, they're going to have a good chance to beat you. So the Reading Royals have to come in tonight and just play their game and consistently play like they did 
to be able to take two out of three against the Newfoundland Growlers, the top team in the division, and then they'll be fine, and they'll be cruising and playing on a very nice stretch here. So stay safe, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this weekend preview as we have the home-and-home home where one starts tonight against the Anirondack Thunder, and then tomorrow where I will be covering the game for Flyers Nitty Gritty. Peace out, stay safe, and enjoy the rest of the season.